All right. Well, welcome everybody. So it is May 2022, and we're here to do our end of spring quarter presentations. Um, so here at Metro, we had five interns. Um, we started with six, and now we have five um, interns for this quarter. And all of you have done a nice job, and I'm excited to hear from each individual. I, I kind of already have a sense from some of you of the, the different topics you'll be sharing with us. So something I love about the noise program is everybody has their own individual experience. So I just encourage you to really listen to each other and kind of see what, what the variety of things has been, a variety of experiences and things learned. So, all right. Uh, we also have some mentors here today. We have Dr. Gomez Johnson from UNO. Um, so thank you all for being here. I'm gonna share my screen momentarily just to show you a rough plan of how this is gonna go. Um, all right. So um, here's the, the order I have set for today. Uh, I think Ben presented last uh, when we went in the winter. So I'm having you go first in a minute, Ben. Uh, so Ben will go first and then we'll have Rainy, then Brian, Abby and Lee. Um, and Rachel will be uh, talking on behalf of Lee. She wasn't able to join us today. So that's the general order of things. Um, I did wanna say thank you to everybody for participating. I know everybody's busy and you have a lot of ways that you can spend your time and energy that goes for the students as well as the instructors. So thank you so much for just being part of this program and making it happen. So I've named the, the mentors that have worked this quarter. We have Minar, Michelle, Rachel, thank them. Nathan, uh, myself, and then Mike Flesh um, is our dean, and he's always very supportive of us as well. So, all right, good. Well, I'm going to close my screen, and um, Ben, when you're ready, we'll get started with you. So we'd love to hear uh, about your experience this spring quarter. So Ben, take it away. Okay, looks like you're sharing your screen. Oh, there you go. Yep, <laughs> now I can hear you. Give me one second here. Okay. <laughs> I thought I already prepared for that, but <laughs> I tried to refresh it and then now it's stuck. Oh no, okay. <laughs> so maybe I'll just start it and then like the PowerPoint will come up later on. Okay. Okay, so my name is Ben. Um, my mentor is Michelle. Um, and this this quarter, I I held with four classes um, um, with all the modular class. Um, so two of them are algebra, and I just uh, stepped in with the Nathan class on a couple weeks ago. Here they come. Here it is. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so here's my oh. mentor. Um, so the class that I helped, um, the Evernote Scholar with the technical math with Michelle, technical math with um, Khaled, um, modular class with Algebra at SAPI Center with um, Wally, and another modular class with Nathan. Um, I have learned from being a noise intern that math can be hard for some people and it takes time to understand. I have learned that having someone there such as a noise intern like me to walk them through problem and steer them in the right direction which should help. And it took a couple weeks for students to allow me to help them sometime like um, then they kind in the beginning math is kind of easy for them so sometimes they don't want you to back um, you to back in right away so I think it's about a couple weeks they can if they have question they will just raise their hand and want you to help and I have learned how to explain things easier having a good sense of timing of for knowing when to and when uh, when not to interrupt, so I feel like I really got to know them. And 
thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, that was a nice experience being a part of NOISE internship program. I love seeing other students succeed. That's all about me. I haven't done anything much this quarter because I all the class that I have is modular class, so I kind of get in and help with students. And sometimes I kind of stay after to like do some tutor with some student too. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. So, um, so Ben, you helped with some classes in the winter as well as spring. Um, and you just said most of them were mod or all of them were modular this quarter. Yes. So I was just wondering, how did you feel like this quarter was different uh, from from your previous quarter, just with the ways that you helped students or anything um, else? <laughs> yeah. So the modular class, you kind of don't know like what they're going to do, like where mm -hmm. they're already working on. So you have to prepare for everything, um, kind of have to know all the um, information about math already. but in the like uh, in the lecture class you know that okay tomorrow we will do factor so i can you i kind of prepare for factor only but modular you have to more prepare oh i see so it's sort of like less predictable with modular they could be doing anything at any time kind of thing yes <laughs> they're working at their own pace okay. yes okay good um yeah do you feel like you have a type of class that you liked better? Like, did you enjoy the one-on-one? -on -one? Did you kind of miss doing the like whole group interaction this quarter? Um, so I think I like modular class better because yeah. I kind of, so I don't have to plan for everything and kind of mm -hmm. walk to them. And I think it's more easier for modular class. And I feel like I be part of the class, like friends sometimes, like I just playing with them, like, oi, so, so we have a problem, like, um, are you going to finish before me or are I going to finish before you or something like that? It's kind of more like a friend's relationship in the modular class. And I am so happy that um, some of them in um, high school, the ever know scholar some of them like um they can pass the class which is like i'm really happy to see them because sometimes like they have about three models left for a week and mm -hmm. i kind of plan to help them and then they can make it so i kind of happy for them to see them pass the class mm -hmm. yeah that's great um another thing i remember you writing about in your reflection so everybody the interns uh, complete these weekly written reflections and sometimes I share those with their mentors so they kind of know what's going on. Um, ben, you worked with I think four different instructors right this quarter. So yeah. um, can you talk more about that like the different did, I know they were all modular but did you notice any major like different teaching styles or different routines? Um, yeah so with Michelle I um, I kind of walk to everyone like kind of busy because like we kind of take turn helping every student all the time with colored class um i can see that um sometime like they already know what they're doing so they don't want me to kind of bucking or bothering but like after two or three weeks of that like some people already finished the class and i can see that some that still in the class so they, they really need help they kind of um, sometimes they kind of shy if like people listen to them if they need help like like really easy stuff so they I think like wait for someone finish the class first kind of um, I can bucking them and help them better mm -hmm. um, for Wally class um, they um, I can help them um, just like a other algebra class. So usually, like it just, um, I mean, it's not really different. So I kind of like, hey, what are you doing today? Like mm -hmm. kind of helping them go through because they not really want to ask the instructor. So I kind of be there and then help them. Mm -hmm. 
And um, Nathan class, I just held about two weeks and then and I can see like a couple people really need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes they ask me when they're taking a test, like, but then I try to, okay, I cannot tell you yeah. whole thing, but right. I'll, I'll try not to tell everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of friend relationship with Nathan class, I guess. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, that's great. I'm glad you had a good variety. And I know that every one of those instructors that had you as an assistant really appreciated you being there. I think you have a really nice presence and it seems like you're really approachable with the students. So that's great. And um, Ben, this is your last quarter as an, a noise intern. Um, what, what are your plans next? If you wouldn't mind sharing and you don't have to share anything you don't want to. So um, I don't know, like I really like teaching I mean, help, help teaching in the class. Mm -hmm. And I kind of asked uh, Michelle, like, how can I be a math teacher? But uh -huh. like I told you before that I want to go to my direction being a pharmacist, that I have to learn English. So mm -hmm. I have to go back to what I have to do because mm -hmm. I have only two years left to take that test. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. and I kind of busy with work and school and my family also sometimes it's like um after class they call me and like both of my kids are crying and then my oh, no. husband cannot handle it so I, okay <laughs> yeah so well we've loved having you as dr johnson said come to uno <laughs> um but i mean you know through your life you can always make make different changes or different decisions and i think if teaching is something you'd want to do you know that's a path that's open for you and hopefully whatever you've learned would apply to whatever you 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 know do as a career so all right good well thank you so much ben um we've really liked having you as part of the program and we'll definitely miss you and i think we can i think michelle would agree it was really nice to to work with you so thank you so much um, so if you want to close your screen now, and the next intern we're going to hear from is Rainey. Um, so we did have, uh, we do have two uh, newer interns presenting today. So Rainey is one of them, and then uh, Brian a little bit later. So Rainey, if you're ready, uh, you can do your presentation next. Okay, so I'm just double checking. So Rainy, you're muted right now. Are you ready to go next? Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying to. Um, trying to get it ready. Um, to share my PowerPoint, but it's not sharing. Okay. Um, on the bottom of the Zoom meeting, there should be a green arrow that says share screen. Are you able to click on that? Yeah. Okay. Do I, is there something wrong with the PowerPoint? So we're not seeing your screen right now. So I think you might need to select the window and then click share or something. So when you click share screen, you should see some different rectangles and then you can choose choose the one and then click the blue share button and then we should see your screen. Okay. Here it is. There we go. Yeah, we can see it now. And then if you want to click slideshow at the top, that's sort of the top middle. Yeah. And then from beginning, probably on the left. Yeah, there we go. We can see it. Okay. Hello, my name is Jane Jesperman, and I'm working with I'm the intern of Miss Sankum. What have I learned? I learned how to explain teaching strategies in multiple ways and how to use the computer to track, track students' progress. And I also learned how to grade and how to 
better interact with students. I also learned how to create a more positive and comfortable environment for students so that they can have an easier time approaching me for help. Have I gotten better at it? In the beginning of an internship, I had trouble communicating and being confident in answering questions. Uh, luckily, I started to become more confident in answering students' questions uh, and better at verbalizing steps to equations. I also got better at grading assignments and setting up worksheets. What has surprised me? Uh, I was surprised at how little students asked for help and how shy some of them can be, but how shy some of them are when it comes to asking for help. Instead of raising their hands, they ask, they look up or around the classroom. I was also surprised on how each student answers the same question in different ways or how some students get the right answer without showing their work in an organized way. What has been challenging for me? I think the most challenging part of the internship is reading students' facial expressions. When some students ask for help, they apparently make a look to ask for help, but I have trouble understanding these looks. I don't know if they are looking around just while uh, thinking of something or if they need help. I also have a hard time communicating with students. For example, when I explain how to solve an equation in words alone, they don't understand. But when I explain while doing the math equation on paper, most of the time, students will then understand what to do. What is a goal that I have? My long-term goal is to become a good algebra teacher that students are comfortable around and have an easy, easier time asking for assistance if need be. My short-term goal is to learn how to read students' facial express expressions and body language for those that have a hard time asking for assistance. And that's the end. Do I press stop sharing? Uh, sure, yeah, that's fine. Thank you, that's great, Rainy. Um, so you were an assistant for modular class. Um, can you say a little bit more about the, you, you mentioned making worksheets. Can you tell us about those? Like what class it was for or what, what those were about? Uh, extra credit pre-calc uh, worksheets. I would put five questions and then uh, with, I would pick out five questions with Ms. Thankham write them and then solve them then put it on a um, word doc mm -hmm. and then I would share the word doc with Miss Thankham and then she would print them out and then after she would hand them to her pre-calc students and the students who did it would then submit it to her and after submitting it to her they Miss Thinkum gave the 
to me to grade and then I had to grade them mm -hmm. which was fun um sometimes I realize people don't I realize a lot that people don't show their work <laughs> or do these jumping movements kind of like they skip steps or something more like they go from one corner to the page of to the other oh i see so they're not organizing their work as well or something yeah also okay. so they do skip steps and somehow manage to get the right answer <laughs> okay what did you do in those cases when you were grading did you find it hard to to give them feedback mm, yes but they got it right mm -hmm. so i didn't write anything mm -hmm. But when they got it wrong, I wrote down from where they got it wrong. I wrote down a step by step on how to get it mm -hmm. to the right answer in red pen. Good. I also, yesterday, I was with a student and I was helping him with an equation. And I really, I saw him, I then realize that some people can do this thing where they can do mental math to decimals as well mm -hmm. so he got a decimal and he mentally did the multiplication problem and got it to 0 0.09 which i thought was interesting wow yeah that's that's pretty impressive <laughs> i then tried to do it with a calculator and then I got the same answer, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that is. Good. Well, Rainy, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, and uh, can you remind me, this is more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but will you be um, working as an intern again in a future quarter? I think you might've said not for the summer, but do you think you'll be back in the fall? I would like that. I would first have to see um, my schedule for mm -hmm. homework first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'd love to have you continue. Um, I think there's there's something good about being an intern for you know two or more quarters in a row. You kind of can work on your skills more and get some more variety with you know the instructors that you work with, maybe the types of classes that you help with. Um, so we're excited to have you, and um, thank you so much. And I I hope you can come back in the fall. That would be great. I had fun. Sometimes if I came to class early and some of the students would come in early, we would talk about interesting movies that are coming that we want to see or yeah. good boba places to go to. I learned about Kung Fu tea. <laughs> good. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that that's great. That, that, that type of thing makes you more approachable, you know, when the students want to ask for help. So that's really good. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Rainy. All right. Good. Let's see who we have next. Um, I'm going to check my list here somewhere. Where did I put it? Okay. So uh, we have another new intern this quarter, which is Brian. Um, Brian worked with me as his mentor, uh, not helping my classes, though. He was helping actually Adriel Baltimore's classes at the Fort campus. So Brian, you're up with your presentation. Yeah. Um, you guys see my PowerPoint on there? Nope, not yet. Are you doing the yeah. green share screen? How's it going now? Can you see it now? No. It's weird. So do the, the green share screen button, then select the screen you want. And then there's another blue button that says share that you click again. Maybe try one more time. <laughs>
I'm saying it's going over my privacy settings. Oh, okay. Um, if you email me the presentation, I can share it momentarily. Do you want to do that? Um, do you just know. give me like, I'm going to see if I can approve it real quick. Okay, sure, sure. That's fine. That's fine. That's weird. It's all good, Brian. We all had these moments in our classes with technology. Yeah, I was just thinking every single one of us. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I was just thinking it's like normal. I haven't taught I haven't taught by Zoom in a while. And I'm like, oh yeah, this <laughs> this happens. <laughs> so yes, that's so true, Rachel. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just gonna email it to you because I can't get it over. Okay. All right. Well. Let's change things up then, just so I have a chance to open it up. Abby, are you okay going next? And then we'll we'll do Brian right after that. Okay. So Brian, I'm going to open it in my email and I'll share it for you to talk through in a little bit. Okay. All right, All right Abby, <laughs> we'll go to you next, Abby. All righty. Sounds good. I think I can maybe figure this out. <laughs> oh yay! All righty. Oh oh no, we're spoiling it. Okay. Can you see the screen? Just making sure. Yes. Yeah. Alrighty. So I'm Abby. I this is my second quarter as a noise intern. Um, I helped with two classes. Um, so yeah, and my mentor is Nathan Stanley. Shoot. There we go. Okay. So my first, I did one modular class and then one lecture class. So I helped with Steve Reller's modular class on Tuesday, Thursdays, um, the whole math spectrum. Um, that class was very small. So it was definitely sort of a challenge to kind of, you know, figure out what I'm doing each day. But um, some students asked for help, some didn't. And it was really just kind of, um, it was a good learning thing. So I would sometimes do a lot of one-on-one -on -one help and check in with students, making sure you know, they're kind of on track for the modular class. And then I also sometimes would work on making handouts for Nathan's lecture class that I'll also talk about. So that's that. Now for Nathan's class, um, that was also on Tuesday, Thursdays. This was just college algebra. So it was a lecture class, which was new to me. Last quarter, I just did two modular classes. So it was really, I, I've enjoyed his class a lot. Um, which is good. So kind of like I talked about, um, I made handouts for the class and then I would send them to Nathan and he would like edit them. And it was kind of just for the more challenging topics. I'm definitely hoping to continue that maybe um, in the summer with uh, other lecture classes I'm helping with. Um, and then also answering questions for students, kind of like the modular class. It's definitely a different environment. Um, so, uh, you know, like when um, we would do like a lab, like Nathan would do lecture time and lab time. So he would give the students time to sometimes work on homework. So then I could also help walk around and do more of that. Um, I also did some like reviews for the tests. We've had three tests so far. Um, for the first two, I did like a sort of review session, which went pretty well. Um, but also this past time I did a Jeopardy, which I think the students liked a lot better because um, then it was, you know, kind of fun. So yeah. Alrighty. Oh, here's a couple examples of like the handouts. I think these are the updated versions. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so for example, like these are a couple challenging topics for students. So we would kind of just like do a review sheet almost and then have an example on there for the students to kind of um, be able to follow along as Nathan does like the notes. Okay. Do to do. Oh, also, so I helped with my two classes and then I also had the opportunity to go to the nomadic conference. I think that's how you say it. Um, in April. So that was a really cool experience for me. It was definitely a smaller conference than I guess I think we expected, but for me, it was still really cool. Um, there was one presentation, about students kind of being put into remedial classes, um, like once they go to community college, like Metro 
or um, yes, yeah. Um, then they'll, they're kind of, what did they say? Have already taken more. Oh, they had like in high school taken, you know, challenging classes like pre-calc and calculus. But then when they go to college, they're being put back in these um, easier classes that they might already have credit for. So it's just kind of interesting to hear the presenter. I think her name was Ashley kind of talk about the students' perspectives. Um, we presented about the noise program and um, how great it was. So I think, I hope they might implement that at their, at their college. Um, what else? Yeah, we kind of talked about uh, the great things about noise that I've enjoyed. So obviously like new experiences, relationships with faculty and other interns, um, what it's like to be a math teacher, all sorts of things. So yeah, that was a really cool thing for me. I went with um, like Emily and all the people, Michelle, all those people, and then also Sydney and Danny from UNO. So yeah. A couple of new things I'm learning, um, sort of how to make the most of your time. Like I was talking about some of these classes I've been helping with are kind of small. So um, I think it's, I've just kind of taken advantage of that and done that one-on-one -on -one help with students um, and stuff like that. Sometimes I work on the classwork or I work on my stats homework because we know we know we all have to keep up with stats. Um, and then also, I guess I added this super quick. Um, we did one of the UNO meetings at, at Metro and that was super fun. We got to go to the math center. So I added that a new learning fun little leading the leading the meeting. So that's fun. Um, lastly, or I think I have a couple more slides. Um, a couple things I've been challenging, um, balancing schoolwork with this internship. I'm continuing in the summer, taking a couple classes, helping with a couple classes. So definitely like, you know, keeping that. Also the timesheets and reflections. Um, staying, okay, staying on track with those. And then also um, with explanations to um, certain students, just making sure that, you know, you can explain it and they're, it's it's getting through their head, sort of. I don't know if that makes sense. All righty. And lastly, I just put a little thing, things I hope for the future of noise, um, you know, kind of moving into next quarter. I'm going to do one more um, quarter, I think, with noise. Um, I'm excited that there may be more interns that follow the math and follow the path and become math teachers. Um, more opportunities for conferences and learning experiences. I know at the Metro like weekly meeting, we talked about Tau Day. So I put this fun little pie in there for Pi Day. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of talked about helping with the summer um, with Michelle's classes, possibly three, but for sure two classes. So yeah, thank you. This has been a great experience. And I think that's the end. Sorry, I talked really fast. Oh, wow. Thank <laughs> you me. so much, Abby. <laughs> uh, oh, Abby, ahead, if you don't mind me chiming in here, uh, do you mind sharing a little bit of your Jeopardy game you created? Oh, yes. Or can you dig it up? Maybe you can. I can dig it up for you. For me. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, boom. Here we go. I'll show real quick. So it's called Jet Party. Can you see this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we can see it. <laughs> okay, because... In the middle of the presentation, it said that participants can now see your screen. So did you see the whole presentation? We saw it, yeah. Okay, I'm okay. excited. <laughs> awesome. So this is sort of the Jeopardy that we did for the unit three tests, like a couple, like last week, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, Nathan and I kind of planned um, during our weekly meeting and did all like the main topics. So long division was a challenging thing, rational expressions and et cetera, all the different stuff. Um, and so like questions, we'd have like our 200 questions and then they, you know, slowly get harder. We didn't make them say what is, so, <laughs> <you know. laughs> but oh, um, <laughs> we didn't make them say what is, but they just did this. Um, so here's just to, like find the domain of the function. So it was super fun. I think they, I think they definitely enjoyed it. So, yeah. We even had I'm some really impressed. math trivia in there too. Yeah, let's, oh, let's quick. oh here we go. Who can answer this? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Okay. It's John Nash. Yes, John. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only mathematician, I think, to win a um, Nobel oh, Prize, too. Yeah. 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 Russell Crowe. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Russell Crowe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess I can stop sharing the screen. We also um, have Abby, was there like a pre-formatted, is this pre like pre-formatted to make it work <laughs> for there was reading? a there was a template out there template. That's oh yeah. yeah yeah yes i did not i just put in the math problems nathan and okay. i like went through we kind of cool. used the practice exam as like uh to base it off of that and mm -hmm. then like here for example like i inserted a picture oh, yep. from the practice exam to wow. kind of, so they could review that's really cool so yeah it was super fun all right nathan i'm impressed that you budgeted the time to do this that's always my struggle so this oh, is I, I'm she put in most of the the grunt work on this well i mean like class time because i was oh, sure rushed, yeah. But, um yeah no that's really well that's really good so yeah it looks good <laughs> wow abby um that's very impressive and yeah <laughs> great job <laughs> so i i just want to say like you've really impressed a, a lot of us with just your initiative um and you're just kind of a yes person like you meaning you say yes to things and you take it on and you take on <laughs> Um, you take on the leadership responsibility and I just think that's great. Um, not everybody has that. And so, yeah, um, I appreciate that. Uh, it's been, it was great to have you lead the meeting at Metro. Um, it was wonderful to have you come to the conference and just be a student voice there and so many other things. So I'm, I'm so glad, <laughs> I'm so glad I had you in my zoom class in the fall. Just I got know. to know you on zoom and now, um, now look how far you've come. So that's really great. Um, yeah. Can you tell us what are do, what are some of your plans? You mentioned summer, um, but do you have sort of career plans beyond that, or still deciding what what's um, what's up with that? Uh, <laughs> Dr. Johnson says, I'm, "Yep, come to you." And I'm checking the comments, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at it, but um, but yeah, I'm still kind of not sure what's. Well, I'm still planning on nursing, but um, for the summer, um, I'm going to continue with ner noise. There we mm -hmm. go. Probably. Um, probably be my last quarter but I'm excited because I know I'm going to be working with Michelle so mm -hmm. kind of get um a different thing on that because I know mm -hmm. her and Ben have been so like I always see them at, at South Campus so that's always yeah. so fun yeah. but but yeah so I'm taking a couple classes and then helping with a couple so I don't know yeah okay Good. Well, we, we all hope you change your mind and become a math teacher because I think you'd be fantastic. Um, okay, well, so that's, you, that's our, that's our biased view. So, <laughs> but really, I mean, that this is what an internship is for, right? I mean, to kind of experiment and see, see what you're good at, what you like, and no matter what you end up doing, I mean, you'll bring like these great communication skills and everything um, oh, yeah. to what, whatever field you go into. So. But we, we, of course, want to keep you and <laughs> we, want, we want you in our math teacher club, but um, obviously that's your that's your choice to make. So anyway, you, you talk to me about, you know, working the fall or beyond, even if you're still kind of undecided. I think you add so much to this program that we kind of hate to lose you. So anyway, <laughs> thank you so much again. I really, I really enjoyed it. So I'll, I'll definitely keep that in the back of my head. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Great. Okay. Good. That the um, standard, Abby. Every every later mentee I have will always be stacked up against you. So uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, well, Brian, let's give yours a try again. Um, I have your PowerPoint up if needed. Um, let's see if you can share it. If not, then I'll share it. Okay. Yeah, let me give one more shot real quick. Okay, try one more time. There we go. Yep, we can see it now. All right, there we go. Perfect. Great. So, working for the noise program, I got to work with two individuals who were from Latin America. And being myself a student whose first language is not English, I was able to identify and connect a little bit more with them, develop that. And also, I got to see what their issues were with like understanding the formats that they were given. So, like I said, I've learned to work with students from different cultures and I also learned to enjoy a little bit more of like helping students understand what they're working on. Um, so the first block that I'm going to talk about is reading and writing numbers and what they struggled with with that. So like the very first one, this is like very early on in the class, uh, this is what I noticed that they were having problems with was reading the numbers, just something that I thought would be like really simple with most people. It's, they were actually struggling with. So for most of us, we're used to reading blocking numbers into threes where we separate them with commas for positive numbers for the most part. For them, I saw it, I, for them, they were both Mexican, by the way. Um, I saw the very bottom one 
where they actually separated the top one with an uh, apostrophe rather than a comma to separate the millions. And I didn't understand it at first and doing research about it, I understood a little bit more and I actually enjoyed learning more about that culture because I'm not Mexican myself, but I enjoy learning more about it. Um, the Argentina one, they don't put anything in between. I feel like I'd get super confused on that one. But for the part two, I would be like how they write negative number. So for us, we put the dash in front of the number to indicate it's negative. And for most of Latin America, they do the same. They put it in front. But I did also talk to them. Uh, we were having a conversation before class with one of the students. And he said that he's used to putting the dash on top of the number. And I was like, but isn't that for repeating decimals? And he's like, but that's not what I do. It's just now I'm not comfortable with that. And so looking at his papers as well, when I was helping him with his homework, he would actually put it on top. And I was like, but that's not a decimal. And so that just goes back to the decimals over here. When we have repeating decimals, we put a dash over it or put three dots after it to indicate that it repeats. But they actually put a carrot behind it to behind it or over it to indicate that it repeats over and over. So it's just pretty cool. Now where it gets difficult, and this is where I struggled quite a bit when I was doing my math tutor, is with division. So error divisions is it's quite different. Sorry. It's quite different. So we're used to putting the dividend and the inside and the divisor on the outside and the corner goes on top, but they just rotate that. And I found that at first very confusing. I was like, that's, no, that's not how you do it. But uh, I talked to my mom. My mom used to be a teacher back in the day in El Salvador where I'm from. And she, she explained to me how they actually work with this. And I was able to connect the way to like understand what they're doing and also kind of teach them the way that we're used to doing it here. So other instructors aren't confused with it. So something else would be the, the symbols they use. But most of them still use the dash and the division sign and the, the what we're used to. But some of them also use the semicolon. And that's another thing that's just, that had no clue that was possible. And I was like, it's not the math problem that I know. But yeah, that's, that's about it for the reading and writing portion of it. Um, another problem I had was communicating. So at first, even when I first started with the program, this is my first quarter, quarter by the way, but um, I noticed they weren't coming up to me at all. They were like, they didn't know that I could understand them, like the way they were asking me the questions. They were, they felt nervous asking me, and I speak Spanish, so like they could speak to me in Spanish, but they felt more comfortable with that. So I can only imagine what they felt like with teachers that aren't Hispanic or that can't understand Spanish, the Spanish language. So they were nervous with me. I could I could feel how they feel with them, and I could connect to how I felt years back when I didn't speak any English, and I was also trying to ask questions, and I just couldn't do it. Um, but that's just with the teacher, and when it comes to my lab math, they struggled even more with that. So they, uh, when I was asking them questions like, what's three times eight, they could easily get that because they could just multiply, right? But when it's asking them uh, word problems, they couldn't like read it, and if they got one word wrong, it would throw them off. And then when they were putting the question, the answers in, and it would ask for the tenth place or the hundredth place. They were confusing that with the hundred tenth. And so they were just going back and forth. And it was just, it was hard for them to ask me, but eventually they got comfortable with asking me and having me help them with reading my lab and all that kind of stuff. So what would be the solution for this? Well, um, one would be, in my opinion, incorporating a second language for teachers. And I know there's like a lot of work if you don't already speak a second language, like, oh, now I gotta learn something else. But I feel like it's even like the basics could help more for like the lower level math classes as well, I think. Or creating a section or a manual for the students to form some math. So again, for mostly for the lower level math classes where it's like the division and all that and how the same numbers can have the same uh, formats can be used in different ways. Well. Yeah, that's basically all I had from this, but I'd just like to talk about what I what I enjoyed about the noise program as well. Um, I really, I didn't know about you know, this about myself, but I, I enjoy helping students. So I, I knew I'd like doing that with my sisters and all that. When they didn't get something, they asked me and I could explain it to them. But helping others just made me feel pretty good about myself and like help seeing them get good grades and slowly graduate out of my modular class and going on to their next level or just being free for the rest of the quarter. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Brian. How do I stop sharing? 
No, that reminds me um, when Brian actually came to help me with my uh, modular a few times, uh, actually didn't recognize him at first. Uh, because he had his mask off instead of on. <laughs> Weird how suddenly you don't recognize a person when they have their mask off. But uh, I had him in Math 960 in the fall. Oh, that's he, right. He was that's an right. excellent student in that class. Mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe I didn't recognize him with his mask off. So it's <laughs> not the first time that's happened. <laughs> hey, Brian, my name is uh, Michael Matthews. I'm the professor at UNO. Um, I'm a math professor there. I have an ESL degree and I have a linguistics degree and a math degree. So this was uh, interesting. This uh, idea that you don't recognize him without his mask is the same as him not recognizing division. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> without, you know, the, the format being the same, right? And um, one of the things that um, I have a paper on that you might be interested in, Brian, you can look it up. Um, my, my name is Michael Matthews. There's a paper I wrote where I said, here's why teaching math is the same as teaching a language because I since I come from both backgrounds I was able to mm -hmm. so your your obviously your presentation there reminded me sharply of that work I did many years ago now um so it was very good interesting thank you thank you thank you um Brian I remember you talking to me about I think I think it was at, at Omaha South High School um yeah. some of the math classes are taught in Spanish or maybe it maybe a lot more than just math, but can you say a little bit more about that? Because I think some of us are just totally unaware. So for Omaha South, it's a very Hispanic predominantly school. So they actually have a whole program where not just math, it's every every course. They are taught one day in English, one day in Spanish, and then it keeps switching back and forth. So they, as they get better with English, they're also getting really good with their Spanish. They also offer math classes. I mean, Spanish classes for students who already speak it, so they can continue to get better with that language for when they graduate and then go on to like higher levels there bilingual in a very like good way. And and you you went through that program, right? Or no? Were you talking did, about it? Yeah. I did for one semester. For one then, semester. But then I, I ended up not doing it anymore. I think they do that at Mars Middle School and maybe uh, maybe Babe Gomez Elementary. I, I can't remember which, which elementary for certain, but yeah, they developed that that immersion dual language program probably about 15 years ago. Okay. And Brian, when they when you alternate days, is it the same teacher every day? That yeah, it's the same teacher. The teacher. It's not like they get two teachers, right? It's one teacher, one day Spanish, one day English. Is that right? No, no, it's, it's the same teacher. I'm sorry. Same teacher. Really <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's one teacher that teaches the same subject. Just one day he teaches it in Spanish, the next is in English. It's just mm -hmm. the same coursework and everything. Too. Yeah, good. And uh, another thing that I remember you, I, I've just found this all really interesting and so relevant and almost like too obvious that we, of course, we need our teachers to speak more languages or at least have some basic knowledge. Um, I think, Brian, you were talking about some of the, the students you were helping in Mr. Baltimore's class. Their first language was Spanish, but did, can you talk more about that? Like you, you still had some trouble understanding each other because I think yeah. something not everybody realizes is not just because somebody's first language is Spanish doesn't mean it's the same Spanish. I don't know. Can you right. say more yeah. about that yeah. if I'm saying it correctly? So so my way of thinking is, well, that's not my way, it's like the way it is. Um, Mexican Spanish is different from Guatemalan Spanish. It's different from Salvadoran Spanish. It's different from Honduran Spanish. They each change. It's almost like the dialect changes. Some words change from one meaning to another. And it's when they're asking me questions about like certain numbers, I mean, certain like problems they were working with, they were asking me in ways that I didn't fully understand mm -hmm. because it's, it's different. It's just something that I haven't heard before. And so yeah, that's basically it. So it's, just, it's just two different dialects between each other. But you were still able to communicate to a certain degree, like enough to oh, understand. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, yeah, we could, we could have a conversation and get and we try. Great. Well, I'm seeing some good comments. Um, yeah. So Dr. Johnson says something about dual language is in many OPS schools. We have a former noise participant who is a dual language math instructor, Oscar Castillo. Oh, okay. Cool. I know him. I know that. He was a uh, action know him. <laughs> oh, you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. I was trying to do in high school. There you go. Where he was great. teacher and I was nice. Cool. Well, anyway, I think 
I think this is all really good for all of us to remember as we maybe hire new instructors at Metro, particularly at South, but really at any of the campuses. I think this is something to keep in mind. And I love what you showed about the, the long division. I mean, I'm sure we've all had those moments where you see a student showing their work. And at first it's like, what is this? And then it's, oh, cool, there's another way to do it. And I think we all need to be reminded to be open to that and learn it <laughs> um, and show it in a different way rather than just here's what the book shows and here's how you do it. Or even assuming like, remember in third grade when we all learned it this way? No, we didn't all <laughs> learn it that way. So um, those are really good reminders. So. All right, well, thank you so much, Brian. Um, it's been great working with you. I know you have summer plans um, and I don't think math teaching is necessarily your main goal, although you could always change your mind. Can you tell us sort of what, what your plans are? So, so my goal is actually to be a civil engineer, but since I actually kind of enjoy math, this might be a good program for me to do right now. But yeah, it's a civil so. engineer. Maybe it changes, who knows, but it's more rough. Great, well, we're, we're here in the fall as well. So we'd love to have you come back. Um, even if you're not 100% committed to teaching math, um, I'd love, you know, we, we could mix and match mentors and get you and maybe in some different types of classes. Um, I can tell you've learned a lot and you probably have a lot more to, to try. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you come back if you want to. So we have, um, we have some, uh, a lot of engineering students who get a math, who get a math degree as well. Right, because it's so close, it's so easy. And uh, in fact, and there are some um, engineering students who have gotten math degrees and and have taught a little bit. In fact, there's some that have gone on to becoming engineering teachers, and not, and not just at the at the undergraduate level. I'm not just at K through you know like seven through twelve, but also the university level. So I mean, it's something to you know think about because. You know, you might, who knows, maybe you're going to be a teacher of engineers. Yeah, that's right. Good. All right. Well, everybody who's here right now, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Matthews from UNO, these are good people to know. And if you think about something you want to learn more about related to UNO or just getting a bachelor's degree or teaching or anything, they're, they're good people to communicate with. So um, if, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. <laughs> so I'm glad they're here today. All right. So I think we have one more intern to hear from, which would be Lee Hicks. Um, she's not able to be here today, but Rachel is her mentor and you're gonna take over for her, right? Yes, um, well, and I, so I've worked with Lee. Actually, she was a, one of my students in the winter while she was an um, intern, I believe with Emily, winter quarter. With Mr. Luke, actually. Oh, with Robinson. Robinson. Luke. She okay. helped my class. Yeah, we did a lot of- There we go, there was a lot of sharing. Over, but yeah, well, and this totally. quarter during spring, she, she'll she explain it because I got a video from her, but she sort of had a bonus mentor because she was working with Amanda Olson in her modular class and they had a lot of time to talk and Lee kind of addresses that in her video. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Lee and hopefully the audio comes through perfectly. Let's see. Hi, I'm Lee Hicks. Um, this is my second quarter of being a noise intern. Yeah, second quarter. Um, and this quarter, my uh, mentor was Mrs. Nura. Um, and this is my presentation. So let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see it. <laughs> okay, so let's go over what I did this quarter. <clears throat> so um, first thing I did was I assisted in my mentor statistic class on Monday and Wednesdays, the mornings. Um, in this class, um, what I did was I'd go over the notes that um, she was teaching, and then I'd highlight some stuff that I think would be good to put in a study guide. And then I make a study guide for the students to use in order to prepare for the upcoming tests. And here um, are some of those study guides that I made. So this first one kind of goes over like the intro vocab, uh, finding class lists, and then the upper and lower class limits. Um, and then also stem and leaf plots, finding the mean, median, and mode, uh, weighted mean, and then Chebby Chev's theorem. And then the second, second study guide, it went over uh, chapters three and four. This kind of covered probability, uh, combinations, and permutations. And then uh, the mean, variance, and standard deviation of probability distributions. And then also finding the area under the standard normal distribution curve. And then this last one here is the most recent one I did. Um, this basically covered hypothesis testing. So there's two 
examples of those. Um, and then I created these study guides on using a Google Doc. Um, and then I also used um, examples from different textbooks just to try and make a more diverse set of questions for the students to use um, in order to prepare for their test. That's what I did in that class. And then um, I also assisted in um, Mrs. Olson's modular class on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Um, yeah, so there weren't too many students in that class, but I still feel like I got, I was able to help as much as I could. Um, so there, in the beginning, there was one girl that did need quite a bit of help. So I, um, I'm grateful that I was able to, able to help her and get the ball rolling on her classes. Um, it was a, an intermediate algebra class. So it was nice like going over that with her and helping her better understand some of those topics. Um, then another thing that I really appreciate in that class is that when we had downtime, um, which is often, <laughs> me and uh, Mrs. Wilson, we talked about like um, my plans for the future, like with education and also career-wise. Um, and she gave me like, talked about her experience um, and gave me stories about that. And then she also gave a lot of good advice uh, when it came when it comes to like um the education field um, and i really appreciate her for that um sharing that and then another thing i did was i did one-on-one -on -one tutoring for the first time and i actually very much enjoyed this um it was uh, a student from mrs van hook's college algebra class um and what we did basically was kind of just go over um the packet that she got in class and go over the the practice problems and i try to hope um answer any questions that she had regarding um, the stuff she covered in class and help her prepare for her tests. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I did this quarter. Um, so let's go over the things that I learned. Um, I definitely learned patience, <laughs> not necessarily with the students, but a lot with myself. Um, I found I had to be patient with myself when it came to trying to, like I just said, explain things to um, a student I was one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I found that in the beginning, um, it got a little bit tricky trying to figure out how to word things, but I definitely learned to be patient with myself um, and, you know, take my time uh, when it comes to that. And then another thing that I learned um, was gaining confidence. I feel like I gained a lot of confidence last quarter, but this quarter I also did as well because, um, you know, it takes a lot you have to be confident in what you're uh, teaching someone, especially when one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I have to be confident and, um, you know, be confident that I know it and am able to explain it to the students. Also, not being afraid to, like, walk up to a student and be like, hey, you need me help, um, and just being, you know, confident in what I know and what I can do. So I really appreciate this for that. <laughs> okay. So, some challenges. <laughs> So I feel like, um, like I was saying, a challenge I had was the wording I was using. Um, definitely in the beginning, it was a little bit rocky, especially with one-on-one -on -one tutoring, just trying to find the balance, but also trying to stop, be patient with myself, stop, and um, take a look at what I was trying to help her with and break it apart, and then teach it to her that way. Because I think a lot of the time, I've done it stuff so many times that I just skip steps, but I need to take a moment to like stop and remember to, you know, like explain it to her in a way that I know she'll understand and not in a way that I already understand. And then another big challenge I faced was definitely time management. I feel like this quarter I was very busy with this internship but also with school and then my other job I feel like I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself um, and I had a lot on my plate and so I, I definitely struggled a little with like time management and keeping organized with things. Um, so I feel like that's something I'm going to work towards next quarter. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything this quarter. I just feel like I need to work on that myself. <laughs> and then lastly, some goals I have. Like I just said, time management. I'm really looking forward to working on that in these upcoming quarters. Um, I feel like this in the following, in the next quarter, in the summer quarter, I don't have so much going on, so I can take the time to, you know, better um, manage my time and, you know, be more organized, which is the next point. I feel like um, organization goes really well with time management. I feel like if I don't give myself enough time to do stuff, I can become really disorganized and make a mess. And so definitely time management and organization is something I'm going to be working um, on in the next quarter. And yeah, um, that's all I have. But also, uh, I'm really grateful for my mentor, Ms. Nurox. She's definitely helped me a lot 
I'm just going to answer any questions that I had, um, especially like with planning for my food education. I know there's been a few things that she's helped me with in planning, and so I really appreciate that. Um, I really appreciate her. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next quarter and seeing what it brings. So that's my presentation. Bye. All right. Um, so the one thing that Lee didn't mention was what's coming next quarter, and I, I'm super excited about it, and I've told a few of you already. Um, so Lee, next quarter is going to be working again with me, and I think she's assisting in a modular class with Bankham. Um, but rather than working specifically with my class, um, we're going to do course development. So one of the things that's on the plan anyway is we're restructuring a few of our classes, and instead of taking our 0910, which is pre-algebra, I take care of the online 0910 course in Canvas. And instead of taking the existing course and editing it, we're gonna build it fresh from the ground up. So she's gonna get that experience on, here's a course outline, starting with a course outline and a blank Canvas shell designing a course. And She's excited about it. I'm thrilled. I think it's going to be such a neat experience for her. And well, I mean, it's going to save me some work too, but mostly I'm really happy for Lee having this learning opportunity. Um, and she is planning to be with you at UNO in another year. She'll be here at Metro one more year. And then so fall of 23, she'll be transferring to UNO math education. She's in it to win it. And I think she's just a rock star. Yep, I have to agree with that. Yeah, Lee has done a great job. Um, so the student she mentioned that she's tutoring, um, I need to tell Lee this directly again, but she she made a huge difference with that student. I mean, she was in tears in my class, like desperate for a tutor, and we found her one, and she's going to get an A in her thirteen fifteen class. And I mean, she herself put in the work, and she you know she, she's a hard worker. Um, but the fact that Lee met with her, I think I'm glad that Lee enjoyed that, but I know the student, you know, that's, that's really valuable. Um, so for all of you, I mean, you know, by now it's not just the math, right? There's people bring their baggage <laughs> with math. And so you're not just there to help academically, but there's a lot of sort of other personal support that you can offer as well. So, um, so I'm really happy that Lee was able to do that. And Rachel, I'm happy she'll be able to do some of your work with you. So, <laughs> so that's great. Good. Hey, em um, Emily oh, yeah. and Kelly, let's stay on for a few minutes afterwards so I can tell you about something that we could uh, do to help Lee get connected to you know, a little bit better um, next year while she's still at Metro. All right. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I guess one other thing I thought of that, Lee, I don't think Lee mentioned this, but she did help Abby lead the student meeting at Metro that one time in, in April. So that was another another thing that she did. So she's done a great job as well. Um, and she'll, like she said, she'll be returning in the summer and continuing um, hopefully maybe all of next year. We'll see, see how that goes. So good. Um, I see a message from Mike. So congrats to all our interns. You're also impressive. Yes totally agree. We're very proud of all of you. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, it's 105. We have some time. Um, I had us scheduled until 115, but we can probably end early. And for the mentors, I was hoping that maybe have us stay until about 130 or so. There's some things I want to tell you about summer. Um, and so I guess what I will say is um, great job, everybody. Thank you for coming. And for the interns, you guys are dismissed. And I'm going to stop the recording in just a minute. And um, Hopefully all the, the mentors and uh, instructors can stay on a little bit longer for some other things that we'll talk about. So, all right, hope everybody has a good rest of your quarter. So thank you. Oh.